Hey guys, Dylan Liu here. Welcome to my channel, and this is my first time making a tutorial. Hopefully, it will be informative for you, so I know I'm working on something worth doing, and I will keep creating more in the future. So recently, I made this Cybertruck and robot gunfight scene, which you are watching on the screen right now. In the tutorial series, I will be sharing some of the techniques in making this shot, including procedural shaders and FX, as well as non-destructive modeling for quick and dirty concept art. In this first episode, I will be teaching you how to create this cyberpunk hologram screen. I made a whole collection of hologram displays using these logos from the game Cyberpunk 2077, which will be all over the place in another animated shot that I'm still working on. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for that one. Now, we will be making a procedural shader using Blender nodes, so you can turn whatever image textures you like into this hologram screen. For those who don't have time to go through the tutorial, the blank file is available on my Gumroad. Link can be found in the description below. You can buy me a coffee, then grab it and use the shader in whatever projects you need. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. So, the basic concept design of this hologram display is to have two handles on each side, and multiple laser beams will be generated from one side and travel to the other. Somehow, you know, we use some technology or black magic stuff, certain images will be projected on the display, which are made of hundreds of laser beams. With that in mind, the entire screen will be semi-transparent, because there's no physical surface, and there's just a bunch of lights. Also, when you switch to the perfect top view, you won't see all the lines other than the logo image itself. But when you look at it from another angle, the rest of the lines will become more visible. The more you move your view to the side of the screen, the lines would become more visible and distracting. This is inspired by the monitors in real life. When you watch the panel from the front, you get the best image quality and color accuracy. When we move to the side of it, the image starts looking weird. That's the color shifting caused by the viewing angle. Additionally, we can do some glitching animation of the laser beams to make them look less stable. You know, the details and imperfections always make your render more realistic. Next, we will break the making of this shader into three sections. The first one is to create the main image using the texture you choose. The second one is to create the laser beams that form the entire panel. And then the third one will be creating the edges of the panel, where the strength of the lasers look more intense. In the end, we will combine three of them and do the glitching animation. Make sure you enable the node wrangler and images as planes add-ons in Blender, and then import your picture as a plane, so we don't need to worry about the respect ratio or the UV. Jump into the shader editor, delete the principal shader but keep your image textures here. Now let's start with the simple emission shader. Because the whole screen is semi-transparent, we add a transparent shader with the emission. From here, we will make a pattern with multiple lines, and then use this pattern to decide which lines are completely transparent and which lines are emitting lights using the RGB colors from our picture. So we add in the Vive Texture node, Adjust the scale to set the number of the lines you want, and also change the direction between X and Y as you like, which will make the lines become horizontal or vertical. Now the lines look perfectly straight and smooth, but the laser beam appears to be pretty noisy in real life if you look closer. So we need to use a Musgrave texture to generate some noises. Again, play around with the parameters until you are happy with the noise result. Let's move on. Combine this noise with our perfect lines using a mix RGB node. And remember to check the clamp, which will normalize the result to 0 to 1. Otherwise, you may see some black artifacts in EV. Then we use the trick I learned from Blender Node Master Arendelle to control the thickness and the sharpness of the lines. We will add a color burn and a color dodge after the wave texture. The second color of the color burn set to be black, and the second color of the color dodge set to be white. Now you see we drag the color burn factor to adjust the thickness of the lines. 
while we drag the color dodge factor to change the sharpness or blurriness of the lines. So the pattern of multiple lines has been created. We can now mix the transparent node with the image emission shader and plug the pattern into the factor of the mixed shader to use it as a mask. Now, we pretty much finished the nodes for the main image part, but we will come back to this section to add more nodes and keyframes for the glitching animation later on. Let's select all the nodes we created so far, group them by Ctrl J, and label it as logo to make things organized. To save some workload, we can simply duplicate the nodes we've done at the start of our second section, the panel background. So then when we replace the image texture with a simple color ramp, we can use the same pattern of the lines to fill the entire plane. And now, of course, you can change the RGB value of the color ramp to have the color you want at the screen background. However, now the lines on the entire screen look too uniform. We would again add some more details on it. We make some areas of the plane to be brighter, while other areas to be darker. So we create another pair of color ramp with emission shader and decrease the strength of the emission. Then we combine these two different emission shaders with a mixed shader and use a Musgrave texture as the factor to control which areas are brighter and which areas are darker. But in between, we will add another color ramp to blur the borders among different areas. As you can see, it is very subtle but it helps add some details. The panel background is down for now, but again, we will come back later to do the animation. So far, we already have the shaders of the main image texture and the shaders of the screen background, but they are two separate node groups. Let's combine them using a simple mix shader. And now you should notice that wherever you look, the main image doesn't really stand out from the background. You are heavily distracted by the entire screen of lines. Also remember what I showed at the beginning of this video, we want to create the view angle effect that exists on real-life monitors. To achieve that and make the main image more stand out, we need to tell Blender when and where we want the background lines to be less visible than the main image. And it only requires two nodes to do so. We add a layer weight node and use the facing output as the factor to control the mix shader. Then we add a texture coordinate and plug the normal into the layer with normal input down. In this way, we can barely see the background lines when we look from the front, which is along the normal direction of the plane. But when we move our view to the side, which is away from the normal direction, the background lines will become more visible gradually. In the third section, we will make the edges of the screen to be much brighter than the inner area of the plane. So it looks like the frame of a physical screen, although there's no physical surface at all. Also, it makes more sense that the laser beams are stronger when they are firstly being generated from the edge of the screen, but become weaker losing energy when they travel along the way. We will do some simple math to procedurally draw a rectangle as the mask to tell where the edges are. So let's start with a texture coordinate, and we will be only using the object output. We add a separate XYZ node to get the X value on the 2D surface. Along the X axis, you can see it's becoming whiter towards the positive direction, while any value less than 0 is pure black. We add a math node and change it to absolute to mirror the black and white along the x axis. Now we can simply duplicate this setup and change the x value to y. So we get the same thing but along y axis. In order to get a rectangle, we add another math node and choose the smooth maximum to squeeze the two black bars we just created towards the center of the plane. In the end, we use one more math node and change it to less than to get a square. Now you see, when we drag the threshold parameter, it only changes the size of the square, but there's, the respect ratio remains to be 1 by 1. We need to stretch it along the x-axis to get a rectangle shape. It's very easy to do and we just need to go back to where we first get the x value and use the math node to multiply it by whatever times we want. 
And also, we can do the same multiply operation to the y value, so we get the full control of the rectangle. After tweaking the x and y values, we get the correct shape along the edges of the plane. But the border between the black and white is too sharp, and we want to blur it. To do so, we need to add a noise texture right before the less than operation, and increase the scale to a crazy large number like a thousand, max the detail and the roughness, so we get a really soft blur. Play around with the threshold parameter until you get a reasonable result. The mask for the edges is down. Now we just need to copy the node setup of the lines again and mix them with a transparent shader. Then use the rectangle mask as the factor to decide the inner area of the plane to be completely transparent. Again, adjust the parameter to get the correct thickness of the edges. And don't forget to increase the strength of the emission shaders because we want the edges to be much brighter than the inner area of the plane. So now, we can group these nodes as panel edges and then combine them with the first two parts we've already done. We are using exactly the same mix shader setup to combine the third part and get the view angle effect on the edges as well. You can now tweak some of the parameters to get the best looking as you like, and we will move on to do the glitching animation as the last part of this tutorial. Let's go back to the main image node group and use a mapping node to shake the image texture horizontally. Instead of shaking the entire image as a whole, which is pretty boring, we are going to break it into some small pieces and shake them individually just like some glitch effects you can do in other software, like After Effects. First, we create a Vernoid texture with the parameters you want. Then, we want to use this fracture texture to control the X location of our image. So we import the Voronoi texture into the X input of a combined XYZ node. Leave the Y and Z as default zero. Then we plug this vector into the location of our image's mapping node. But keep in mind, previously we set the wave texture's direction to be Y, which makes these lines along X axis. If you were making them in another direction, you may want to change this x, y, z accordingly. Now, we can see our image has been fractured all over the place. But based on our concept design, the image is displayed by some laser beams along x axis. So it doesn't really make sense if the image is fractured in the y direction. To make the glitch to be y direction only, we can add a mapping node to the Voronoi texture and change its X scale to be 0. Lastly, to be able to animate the shaking glitch, we need to put a math node between the Voronoi texture and the combined XYZ, then use the multiply operation. So now, when you change this value, your image texture will be glitched along the X axis. Instead of manually keyframe the value on the timeline, we just need to key the first frame, then go to the graph editor, Find and select that value, open the modifiers tab, and add a noise modifier. From here, you can tweak the skill and the strength to animate the glitch in the way you like. On top of the horizontal shaking glitch, we could add more details so the laser beams look more unstable. There are three nodes you can play around with. The first one is the thickness of the lines, that is controlled by the color burn. The second one is the sharpness of the lines that is controlled by the color dodge. And the third one is the pattern of these small noises controlled by the Musgrave Textures scale. Keyframe these three values and use the same noise modifier method as I just showed. You will get some crazy glitch details to make the screen more interesting. These glitch effects are mostly very subtle, but they could be noticeable in close-up shots. And don't forget, these are just the glitch animations on the main image. You can do exactly the same glitch effects on the other lines, in the background and along the edges, by animating the same parameters in the other two node groups. Now you have done this procedural node setup, you can just simply replace the image texture with whatever pictures you want, adjust the respect ratio of this plane, or you can tweak the UV in the UV editor. In the end, you will get all these different hologram screens. 
I hope you find this video helpful, and I'm still exploring the best style and workflow of making tutorials. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and learned something. It means a lot to me as a small YouTuber. And please leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. I really appreciate that. Alright, stay safe and always be creative guys. I will see you in the next one.